All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to complete one of these Born Harbor cycle questions. All right, this one specifically is for copper two oxide, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to teach you some of the things you just need to be aware of and how to do these sort of diagrams, right? This is not unique to AQA. This is more of a maths based question, all right? The, all these Born Harbor cycles, they don't change. I don't care whether you're AQA, OCR, Edexcel, whatever you do, it's going to be basically the same throughout the entirety of A level chem, regardless, right? So let's look at how to solve this. Let's just read through the question. So data for the Born Harbor cycle for copper two oxide is given in the table below. We have a data table here. Complete the diagram of the Born Harbor cycle for copper two oxide. Include labels of enthalpy changes with arrows indicating the direction. This is really simple. I'll show you how to do that. And the respective species with state symbols. State symbols is super important for Born Harbor and thermodynamics, all right? Next up, really simple calculation here. Calculate the lattice energy of copper two oxide. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as lattice enthalpy, but in this instance, it's lattice energy, all the same thing. It honestly doesn't matter. Right, so pause the video yourself and attempt this question. Just get a scrap piece of paper out, draw some rough lines, draw the arrows and the symbols and everything in and see where you go wrong. Learn from your mistakes. That is super key in chemistry, okay? So pause the video, see how you go, and let's go through it together. Right, so what do you have to do? Labels of enthalpy change, arrows, and state symbols with the respective species. Okay, this is not going to change. It's going to be the same every single time. So this right, this down here is always going to be a negative direction arrow. What does that signify? It signifies that the reaction is exothermic or there's a negative energy change. When there's a negative energy change, there's a downwards arrow. When it's positive or endothermic, it's upwards arrow. Really easy to get your head wrapped around that, hopefully. Now, this one down here is always going to be the enthalpy change of formation. So this is just given the symbol F here, but normally you'll see it something like this with the delta H signifying enthalpy change and then a lowercase f um, sometimes below the delta symbol to signify it's just formation. But this is just shorthand note making. Um, you don't really need to do it like this, but that's just how I how I draw it out. So this is always going to be the first one. And as I said, it's always going to be negative. So what you would normally do is you'd take a cheeky look at your data table. You'd find where the enthalpy change of formation is and you would just stick the value in there. OK, so I'm going to label it as this. Imagine I wrote that next to there. That is our symbol for that enthalpy change. And I'm going to also put in the value here. One, five, seven negative because it's exothermic. Now, when you're drawing out these Born Harbor cycles, right, you don't actually need to put this in at all. The main reason I do it is because you're normally going to have a subsequent like follow up calculation question like they do right here. That's normally the case for all these sort of Born Harbor cycle questions. So I'm going to put that in there for later use. All right. So where do we go from here? They've given us a formula, right? Copper solid one mole of that plus half a mole of diatomic O2 gas. So I'm going to touch on this a bit later, but this half a mole here, it's really important you understand with Born Harbor cycles. The units is what right here? What is the unit here? This is kilojoules per mole, per one mole. Is this one mole? No, it's not. It's half a mole, right? So you just so you just have to keep this in mind, right? You're going to get a lot of diatomic molecules, O2, N2, Cl2, etc. Well, you have to split this and make them one mole for the sake of a born harbor cycle. All right. So next thing we have to think to ourselves is we've got the enthalpy of formation. So I'm going to actually tick that off right here when we do the calculation, what do we need next? We need to do the enthalpy change of atomization. What is the enthalpy change of atomization? It's essentially where you form one mole of gaseous atoms from their elements in standard states. Okay, you do need to know that definition. Learn the formal one. You'll just find online notes or in your textbook. Just remember that definition because you do need to know it. But yeah, the atomization, that's the next thing we have to do. So if we look at our table over here, where is atomization? All right, cool. So atomization of copper right here. And we have atomization of oxygen. So which one are we going to choose? Are you going to do copper first or oxygen? Trick question. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It does not matter. You can choose either one. So I'm just going to choose copper because it's first in our list here. And what we need to do next is we need to draw the direction of the arrow correctly, which is super easy. Like I said before, if it's endothermic, upwards arrow is positive, right? And I'm going to put in our value again, plus three, three, eight. And then next to it, I'm just going to put the symbol enthalpy atomization of copper. Okay, cool. 
So next up, we're going to do the enthalpy atomization of oxygen, really easy. But what we have to do here is we have to draw out our equation, including state symbols. So if I put copper here plus half a mole of oxygen gaseous, what is our state symbol of our copper? We've turned it into one mole of a gaseous atom. All right, next up, oxygen. So what we're going to do here is so look at our data table again, plus two, four, nine. And then we'll put enthalpy atomization, oxygen. Okay, now we have to draw out the state symbols and equations again. So it's going to be copper. What's the state symbol here? Gaseous, nothing has changed. Oxygen this time, we've atomized it to form one mole of gaseous atom. So it's just going to be O, gaseous. No need for the half O2 here. We've atomized it, so we've turned it into one mole. Easy peasy. Right, so those two are ticked off here. What do we have to do next? So we have a list of things here. We have the first and second ionization energies of copper. Cool, we have first electron affinity of oxygen, second electron affinity of oxygen, and standard enthalpy change formation of copper two oxide, which we've already done. So one of these, these are actually four because these are joined together. So what I'm thinking to myself here is what always happens first? Do we normally get electron affinity happening first? Electron affinity is just when you gain an electron, okay? And then ionization is when you lose an electron in terms of Bornhaber cycles, right? In terms of ionization, you can both gain and lose an electron and be ionized. But for the purposes of this, it's always going to be losing an electron, all right? So what we're going to do first is this one right here. Ionization will always come before electron affinity if you're going from left to right across. So like if you're going this way through the cycle. Okay, if you're going this way, I wouldn't advise doing that. Always try and start bottom left and work your way up and around. Okay, if you can. Now, what we're going to do is, again, the arrow is positive. So it's going to be like this. Boop. So this arrow right here is actually going to be this. Okay, it's going to be first and second ionization energy. Normally, you're going to see this broken into two different stages. So there'd be another line here and you have to do the second one, right? In this instance, it's not going to be like that. So we have to think to ourselves, how is this equation going to transform to accommodate the first and the second ionization? Super easy, right? So when anything is, if we were doing the first ionization, it would just be copper plus because it's only lost one electron. In this instance, we're doing both at the same time. So it's going to be copper two plus. Remember state symbols, guys, this is gaseous. It's going to stay gaseous for the rest of this. Plus, O, has this been ionized? No. Okay. So we've, we've got O here, which is also gaseous. And then you cannot forget this. Okay. You cannot forget the electrons that you kicked off. So we kicked off two electrons here because it's the first and second ionization. So that is our equation. Good to go. What I'm going to do now is just put in our value of plus two, seven, zero, four, and put the symbols right here. So this is the first ionization energy and second ionization energy. And that is for copper. I'm gonna leave that off for now. Right, so that's done. Cool, all we've got left is the electron affinities. So which goes where? We've got this minus 141, and we've got this positive 798. So wh which one do you think is which? Hopefully you're absolutely screaming at me right now. This one has to be negative because it's below this one, right? So it has to be negative, it's below it. If this is an energy cycle, you can think of an imaginary y-axis here, right? Going from zero energy all the way up to whatever is at the top. So essentially, if something is below something else, it means it's at a lower energy um, in the cycle, okay? So this one's gonna be minus 141. And what is our equation gonna be? So it's gonna be copper, let's put in our state symbol again. So what is our O gonna transform to? It's simply just gonna be reduced, right? It's gonna gain an electron, which is just electron affinity. So we're gonna have O minus gaseous plus, how many electrons are left? One. Okay, it's really important to understand that, is that when something is, it's quite, kind of like redox, right? When something is oxidized to produce electrons, they, they lose those electrons, something else is gonna gain it, okay? So just keep that in mind. When something has an electron affinity present in the cycle, you're gonna use one of the electrons or more than one of the electrons, depending on what you're looking at, to fulfill that reduction, okay? So the next thing you have to do here is, this is kind of in the way, but I'm just gonna draw the arrow straight up like this because it is positive and that's our last one. It's plus seven, nine, eight. 
and we're gonna put in the equation. So this is super easy. Copper two plus gaseous plus, what do you think is here? How does this oxygen minus change? So it's gonna become O2 minus gaseous. Cool, and that is done. We've ticked that off. All right, so let's add in my symbols quickly. This is the enthalpy of electron affinity one of oxygen. And this is the enthalpy electron affinity two of oxygen. Okay, done. That is four marks right there. Okay, we've included the labels of the enthalpy changes, both the values and the actual enthalpy change symbols. We've included all the arrows that we need to, and we've given all state symbols that we need to for the equations. So that will be four marks right there. So you see how easy these questions are when you when you actually practice them. You need to practice these questions, okay? But essentially the main takeaways would be the direction of the arrow is the, dependent on whether it's a positive or negative enthalpy change, upwards arrow being positive or endothermic, downwards arrow being exothermic or negative, always remembering state symbols. When you atomize a diatomic molecule or like half of an, a diatomic molecule, you need to form it into one mole, okay? When it's atomized, it needs to be one mole. They try and trick you up on this all the time, so just keep that in mind. And then when something is oxidized to produce electrons, when something else adjacent to it or involved in that equation is reduced, those electrons are gonna be gained onto there, okay? It's not gonna gain random electrons from somewhere else in space. It's always gonna gain the electrons that are produced from the other species present in the reaction. Just just really remember that because a lot of students make that mistake, okay? So they would have done like here, they would have done copper two plus plus O minus plus two electrons still, and they would have lost that mark because they would have got that part of the cycle incorrect. All right, cool. So that's born Harbor cycles done, guys. That's literally step by step. You're gonna wanna look at the data table given. You're gonna wanna tick them off as you go. Obviously with time, with your exam technique improving, you will speed up with this. It may take you a while in the beginning, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. So what we're gonna do is look at this next part here, which is super simple. This is just a one marker. Calculate the lattice energy or refer to sometimes as lattice enthalpy change of copper two oxide. So if we look back to this cycle, where is the lattice enthalpy? Which arrow is lattice enthalpy? It's not on there currently. We are going to have this right here. All right, that is our arrow. You're gonna have lattice energy or lattice enthalpy or lattice formation. It's called a few, yeah, a few different things, I'm not gonna lie. And then you have lattice dissociation. Okay, it's really important that you remember these two differences. Okay, lattice formation or lattice formation. If they don't mention formation, then just assume that we're forming this guy right here. If you have lattice energy, you're essentially forming this lattice. Why is it referred to as a lattice? It's because it's an ionic compound, right? Which are, exists as lattices. So just keep that in mind. And if it says lattice dissociation, we're going the other way. We're breaking the ionic compound, it's lattice up into its constituent ions, okay? That is dissociation. But in this instance, we're gonna be doing formation or just simply lattice enthalpy. So let's rub this out and just do our equation. now. The way I love to teach this um, to all my students is find where you're starting. Which energy level are you starting at? And which energy level are you finishing at? And I'm just gonna give that the symbol S for where we're starting. So if we're looking at this, what I mean by starting is essentially this energy level right here is where we're starting. So I'm gonna put an S there. And where are we finishing? We're finishing right here. So essentially where the base of the arrow is is the start and where the head of the arrow is is where you finish. Now you can do this calc a different way, but honestly, I'm not a fan, so I'm just gonna skip over it. But if you know how to solve this simply, then just keep on doing what you're doing, man. Like, just keep on going. You're getting it right. There's no reason to change things up. But for those that are not too sure, I'm gonna explain it. So essentially, the way that you can think of, um, you just have to think of Hess cycles, right? Like the root is always going to have the same amount of energy regardless of which root is taken, okay? <laughs> I kind of butchered that. But essentially the way you need to think of it is if we're going from here to here is our start to finish, this arrow is going to be completely identical in energy level to if we went all the way round, okay? That's essentially how it is. This root is gonna be identical. So what we can do is we can just follow these arrows back to this lattice enthalpy, all right? And do the calculation. But remember, you have to think of the direction of the arrow. So for example, this plus 798 right here is an upwards endothermic arrow. If we're going from here all the way back down, we're gonna actually be going against some of the arrows. 
So we're going against this arrow to get down here, and then we're gonna be going against this arrow to get up here, okay? So just keep that in mind. So what I'm gonna do is every time you go against an arrow, you have to reverse the symbol right here, okay? So if it's plus seven, nine, eight, it's gonna become negative seven, nine, eight. Okay, so let me just write out enthalpy of lattice formation equals minus seven, nine, eight. Okay, we've got minus one, four, one. Is it gonna stay negative or is it gonna become positive? It's gonna become positive, okay. Why is that? Because we're going against the arrow. We're also going against this arrow right here. So if we do this, it's gonna be minus two, seven, zero, four. Are we going against this arrow? Yes, we are. So it's gonna be minus two, four, nine. Are we going against this arrow? Yes, we are. So it's gonna be minus three, three, eight. You don't need to do all these arrows on your actual exam. I'm just explaining it to you. And then are we going against this arrow or with it? We're going with it. So it's gonna stay the same, minus one, five, seven. All right, really easy. I love this method because you literally can't make a mistake. If you reverse the sign every single time, it's always gonna come out as the correct answer. If you just chuck that all in your calculator, as it is laid out on the screen right here, you're gonna get an answer of minus 4,105, and they haven't asked for units, but their units has not changed. It's still kilojoules per mole. So that's our final answer, five marks right here. Really easy stuff. Once you practice these Bourne Harbor cycles a few times, they just become second nature, guys. It's like a little puzzle you have to solve. And then this is really simple maths. If you just follow the method I taught you where, okay, which energy level are we starting? Where are we finishing? Follow the arrows around and it's easy XP, okay? Hopefully you found this video helpful if you've been struggling with these Bourne Harbor cycles. It honestly doesn't get more complicated than this. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Subscribe, like the video if you found it helpful. It really helps the channel grow. Send it to any of your friends that are doing chemistry. All the best in your revision and upcoming exams. Guys, until next time, peace.